If you guys remember, when we're going to be dealing with this, um, what we need to be looking at, again, is now we have this formula. All right, so we need to determine then, is this going to be a, where is our transverse axis going to be vertical or is it going to be horizontal? So remember, every single one of our formulas, because then we're going to have to graph it. So if I have x minus, x minus h squared over, remember it's always a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Remember a hyperbola, it's always a squared minus b squared. So since we have our x squared over the a, does that mean we're going to have a transverse axis that's horizontal or vertical? Horizontal. Horizontal, very good. So therefore, since we know that's horizontal, we know that this is your a squared and this is your b squared, right? So we can say if a squared equals 4 and b squared equals 16. Yes? OK. Now we also know h and k. So therefore, we can say the center is going to equal 3 comma negative 2. All right? So just by doing that, ladies and gentlemen, we can plot a pretty good graph. However, they are asking us to determine what our foci are and to graph using our asymptotes. So the first thing, let's just kind of graph this over here. So my center is at 3 comma negative 2, 1, 2, 3, negative 2. Um, my a is going to be 2. Since we determined that this is a horizontal transverse axis, I'm going to go over 2 units. And then to the right, 2 units. So if here's my center, here are going to be my two vertices. Now what I need to do is determine my foci. Now remember that the relationship between your a, b, and c for a hyperbola was c squared equals a squared plus b squared, right? So therefore, my c squared in this case is going to be 4 plus 16. So c squared equals 20, square root, square root. c equals 2, um, square root of 5. All right, now you guys can simplify that answer. You know it's going to be like 4 point something, right? As a distance. Um, and I, anybody have the decimal approximation so we can, as we graph it? 4.47. So therefore, remember, they all have to lie on this transverse axis. So remember, if my C, which is 4.47, right? It's approximately 4.47. That's the distance from my center. So if I go over 4.47, so I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 4.47, and then to the left, 4.47. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. So I can say that's my foci, and that's going to be my foci. All right. Um, x minus 3, y plus 2. Oh, OK. All right. So now we need to figure out the asymptotes. So yes, remember the asymptotes take in the form. Since this is horizontal, um, yes, Julianne? No question? OK. Since this is horizontal, I'm looking at this. And I'm going to have my b over my a. So I'm going to have k plus or minus b divided by a times x minus h. So we know our k and our h, and we know our a and our b now, correct? So therefore, y equals k, which is 3, plus or minus our b, which is 4, over a, which is 2, times x minus h, which is 2. So therefore, this is y equals 3. Let's do this two different equations. 3 plus 4 times uh, x minus 2. And let's do y equals 3 minus 4 times x minus 2. Oh, yeah, it's 2. Sorry. Thank you. So if I break that up, and rather than trying doing the plus and the minus, just do them separately. Do a positive and then do a negative. All right? So now what you're looking at. Um, when doing this, now you just apply a distributive property. So 
So now, ladies and gentlemen, what I have is two equations, all right, plus Oh, wow. Negative 2 times 2 is definitely plus 4. So that becomes plus 7, right? Thank you. So now what we're going to do is now let's plot these. So we have the center, the vertices, and the foci. Now let's graph these two equations. So if I go up 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And now I'm just going to follow the slope of down 2 over 1. So down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2, over 1. That's not going through the 7. And let's go down to negative 1. This is 3, negative 2. Let me check. Where do I, did I write them? I have a question. Why did you do b over a instead of a over b? I did b over a. K plus or minus x minus h. Oh. <laughs> no, where I made my mistake is I plugged in 3 in for h. OK. So if you guys will see that the mistake, Destin, that I made, because I'm trying to get you followed along with that, is you're going to have 2 plus or minus 4 halves times x minus 3. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, your h, it's x minus h. Here's your h, right? I don't know why I picked the wrong one, but your h. And it's x minus h. And then your k, which is um, negative 2. All right? So you guys got to make sure you're plugging those in properly to get them. So now let's go and do this again correctly. So y equals negative 2 plus 2 times x minus 3. And then y equals negative 2 minus 2 times x minus 3. So now apply distributive property. y equals negative 2 plus 2x um, minus 6. So y equals 2x minus 8. And then here, apply distributive property. y equals negative 2 times 2x uh, plus 6. And therefore, y equals negative 2x plus 4. So let's go and try this again. Because our two asymptotes are going to have to go through our center. So when I look at this, I go up to down negative 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And I go up 2 over 1 up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. So you can see that's one asymptote. Then I graph the other one, which is up 4, negative 2x. So I go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And now I go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. All right, so now I've created my two asymptotes y equals negative 2x plus 4. And this one is y equals 2x minus 8. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I can graph with my vertices and my foci. And there you go. That's your graph. So to write down your homework, guys, I'll...